Dear students, from today we are starting some other bench of modules on programming languages. You know that programming language is a language through which you communicate with the computer. And that language is a little bit different than the language we use to communicate with the humans. So with humans, we normally talk in English, Urdu or some other language. However, with computers, you normally talk in binary language. And that binary language is very difficult to remember. So then, we have moved towards high-level languages which are somehow relevant and related to the language humans use in their daily life. So we will discuss about such generations in today's module. So do you remember this from one of the module where we have such a system where all of the information was given to you in some of the previous module that we have a CPU that has registers and program counter, instruction registers and all of the instructions are loaded in the RAM. So this is a program and that program is then loaded into the CPU at appropriate places. So this is instruction we have learned previously which was 156C and that was stored in two memory locations. And this instruction was saying that you need to load the content which is available at 6C memory location into the register number 5. So here somewhere is register number 5 where all of the content of 6C memory location will be loaded. And then 6D location will be loaded into register number 6. And then this instruction is saying that you need to add whatever is found in register number 5 and 6 and should store the result into register number 0 somewhere here. And then the result of register number 0 should be stored to 6E location. And then 6000 means the halt instruction that we are going to end this program. So this was basically the programming language which was previously used as early generation or generation number one where all of the communication was done using the machine language. Then there was a shift that we should at least use some mnemonic or some descriptive names. For example, the same instruction is being translated here. It is saying LD R5 price. So this was the instruction on the previous slide 156C. So 6C is the memory location and that memory location has been given a name price and that price is actually called a variable in programming language. And this R5 has been translated from only 5 which was used in the previous instruction. And this 1 has been given a name of LD which means load instruction. So LD, ADD, ST and HALT these are the mnemonic or symbols that were being used in the next generations. And price, shipping charge, total cost, these are basically the descriptors or the variables. So converting mnemonic expression into machine language instructions were done using assemblers. So as we discussed that all of the communication with the machine will take place using machine language. And however, on the previous slide, we have used some mnemonic and descriptive names. So we need a program that will convert this information, this mnemonic and descriptive names into the machine instructions. And this is called the assembler. And a mnemonic system for representing is collectively called the assembly language. So this means we shifted from machine language to assembly language where we could use some of the mnemonic and descriptive names. 
and we have discussed about the program variables that such descriptive names are called program variables are identifiers. So if we summarize today's module, we have learned about early generations of computer programming and we have learned about machine language, what are assemblers, what is the concept of assembly language and what is the concept of variable.